So today I'm going to be talking about my workflow. What happens after I take my photos, bring them to my computer, import them, how I organize them and then how I back them up so I make sure that I never ever lose a single photo I've taken. Let's start with number one. That's how I import my photos. I use a program called Photo Mechanic. Photo Mechanic is a sorting, culling program. It's not made for editing, but really good for looking at photos in a really fast and efficient way. And it's absolutely amazing for importing your photos. So that's how I start my workflow. The first thing I do is rename my photos. So the moment they come off my memory card, they go into my computer, they will have one name and that is the one name they will keep all the way through to exports when clients get them. That way I can always reference them back when a client goes, hey, we have this tiny resolution JPEG of yours of this image. Can you give us the original? And they can just send me the name and I can find the raw file again. So keeping us safe and secure and logical Naming structure is really, really important to finding your way back to your photos. So never ever change the name of your photos throughout your process. As a travel and adventure photographer, I'm always in different locations and at different times and different places. So the most logical way for me to sort my photos is by date and then location and then sub location or whatever is happening, the job or whatever. So the most important thing is the date first, then the location. My photos are sorted by year, month, day. So they are chronologically in a file order. Then I have the location, which would usually be the country or the country code. And then the sub location, which would be, for example, the States, California in the US. And that way I can really quickly find my way back if I have to look at the folder names. My file names have a very similar structure. Now, the one thing I recommend if you want your photos to be recognizable, the first thing you should put in your photo name is your name. So my photos start with Air Walker, then an underscore year, month, day, and then an underscore country code, because that's how I can quickly see which raw file belongs to what country if I have to, if I look into a folder. And then I have a, a random sequence so I can never ever have duplicate names. At this stage, my photos exist in two places, on the camera on an SD card and on the second SD card because my camera takes two SD cards in one. So I'm always writing to two SD cards at one time. Now, another great feature in Photo Mechanic is the way you can use variables and how you can modify IPTC fields inside Photo Mechanic. I know you can do this in Lightroom too, but Photo Mechanic is levels above this. Now, I'm gonna make a completely different video on how to use Photo Mechanic and how I use it as an adventure and outdoor photographer and how I make use of variables and how importing for me is really easy and really systematic and really consistent. And I think that is the most important thing. Your first step should be as organized as possible so you can work your way through your whole image catalog in a logical and systematic way. The next step is to use Photo Mechanic to cull and sort my photos. I start by just working my way through. I look at every single image and everything that's blurry, out of focus, technically just not right, that I could never ever sell to anyone in this world, I trash. I tag it to be trashed. Everything that I think is worth editing, I will mark with one star and I'll just work my way through. Trash, one star, trash, one star, trash, trash, one star, one star, and so on until I reach the bottom of my shoot. It takes a couple of minutes to work your way through, but then once you're done, I then move on to Lightroom. Now, I import my photos into Lightroom, but I don't move them or change them or anything. So basically, I just add them to my catalog. One of the most important things in my process is that the catalog is separate from my raw files. So in the beginning, my raw files will land on my computer, which is like the working platform where I will process my raw files. Later on, obviously, those raw files go to an external drive. My Lightroom catalog is on an external SSD. I have a MacBook Pro with USB-C. This is a USB 3.1 connection that writes about 450 megabytes a second. That is plenty fast enough. And my raw files eventually sit on an external drive. So this could be a two terabyte external drive and we'll come to that later. But this is my catalog, these are my raw files. The next thing is I synchronize those folders where these raw files are sitting in, into Lightroom. I don't rename them, I don't change the, any meta information. I've done all that in Photo Mechanic. The only thing that Lightroom does is add these photos to the catalog and then it generates smart previews for me. Now I did a video on that, check it out. I'll link it up below now and um, there I talk about all the smart preview feature and what's great about it. In short, this contains all my 100,000 plus photos and they're all editable and there's not a single raw file on here. So check out the smart previews if you don't understand what I'm talking about, but this is a one terabyte SSD drive. So 
Um, the great thing about this is I can drop it. The other great thing is I can plug it into any computer, edit and export my photos without actually having access to my raw files. So definitely worth checking out. So once Lightroom has added those photos to the catalog and generated the smart previews, I can basically detach my raw files. I can move them away. I'm not too worried about them anymore. I just store them and that's fine for now. And I start working my way through Lightroom. I will never look at my raw files just in the date folders. I actually usually look at them through collections. So I'll have a collection that contains everything from that location and that date. Some projects go over multiple weeks, so they will all end up in big folders. Those are really big collections, but then I will create smaller collections out of that selections for my clients, selections for social media, selections for exports, selections for my website selections for videos or episodes, things like that. So I have this bigger collection and I'll make more collections under it, but it's always sort of sorted by the location. And then I'll have additional collection sets um, for Olympus. I provide often provide images, so they'll have their own collection set and every job I will copy images into there as well. Now the great thing about collections, it's all virtual. I'm not actually moving my files. My raw files are sitting somewhere in a drive. My smart previews are basically an image of those in a smaller, lighter version, but I'm not actually moving any files around. I'm just creating virtual connections to those. Now the next thing I'll filter by one star. Everything that has one star is worth editing. Those ratings from Photo Mechanic also work in Lightroom, so I can just filter down down to 50% usually plus minus. Then I'll go through Lightroom develop mode and just edit the ones I really like. And everything that's edited gets two stars. And that's pretty much where my rating ends. So I go from one to two stars. If I know I've shot one of my favorite photos of all time, occasionally I'll go up to three stars. I've never really taken the best photo ever. I know I haven't. So rating something with five stars and then next week going out and shooting something even better, well then I'm gonna have to go back and re-rate it down to four so I can rate the next one at five and the week after the whole thing starts off again at the beginning. So there's really no point in going, this is the best photo I've ever shot. I just create collections and there I will make, you know, my best of photos from that trip and there is more my sorting than with ratings and stars. So my stars really just mean one star worth editing, two stars, it's been edited in Lightroom. And that's pretty much where it ends. Now, how do I back up my photos and make sure that I don't lose them? Now, this has happened once to me. I lost four months worth of photography. That is a couple of thousand photos in my case. And it was the most painful thing that ever happened to me. And it's the most unprofessional thing. I'm really ashamed that this happened to me. I should have had a backup. You should have a backup too. It takes time, money, and a lot of planning and a lot of work to create those images. Why would you want to lose them? Just because you don't want to buy or create a backup. Like I said, my raw files eventually move from my computer, which is the working station where I'm processing them, to an external drive. This would be my photo 1A drive, and that is duplicated. Every drive I own, I own twice. 1A and 1A backup, and that's the way I can make sure that I will never lose a file on location. If this drive dies, I have the backup, I will immediately go out and buy another one, and I will make sure that I'm not usually putting these together in one bag because that doesn't really make that much sense because you're, the only thing you're saving is if this file drives while it's spinning, then you got to back up. But if you're losing both at the same time, well, then you've wasted your time and money. So these are identical drives and they have identical data on them. Now, the third thing I use is a cloud backup and it's called Backblaze. Um, it's a new thing I discovered recently. It's five bucks a month and you can have unlimited backup data and it just it's really simple so you can really not do anything wrong you just select which drive you want to back up and it just does it for you now this works great if you have a good connection of course how do i make sure that these two drives stay the same so what if i edit some photos i shot you know in 2016 and they're on this drive but they're also on here but how do i make sure that those files that are somewhere deep down in here are synchronized to that drive i use a program called carbon copy cloner it is the most efficient way to make sure that two drives are in sync and that they're identical. It recognizes what has been changed here and it'll back it up to here and it'll just change what's new. So it's a really, really efficient program and um, never fails. I love it. But I also have a backup of this on here, which is synchronized and up in the cloud. So this is my catalog. My holy catalog exists currently in one, two, three, four locations. And my raw files all exist in three locations. So there's really no way of losing my data at any time ever. That was it for the workflow going from SD card 
to catalog, to external drive, to backup drive, to cloud. And I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something out of this. Do me a favor, keep a backup of your raw files. If you ever lose a drive or if a drive fails or if something happens, you will thank me for it. And I think every professional photographer should at least have their photos in two different locations. Please put them in three, uh, five bucks a month is really not that much. If you're paying for Lightroom, then you can afford this as well. So consider it. I've linked it down below, check it out. Also check out the blog post, lots of pictures and really nice description of how my workflow works. And there's a nice diagram there. I think you will enjoy it and will understand it even better if you look at that. So check out the blog post. Thanks for watching and I hope I see you next week in the next one. So see ya.